What's up everyone, my name is Mark Samonte, and in this video, I am going to show you how I put together my new gaming slash video editing PC using these components. Let's begin with the motherboard. I chose the Asus Republica Gamers Maximus X Hero with Wi-Fi AC. I needed a motherboard that has an Intel socket for 8th generation processors, capable to have up to 64 gigabytes of RAM, have multi-GPU support, M.2 sockets, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth ready. I chose Intel's Core i7-8700K for this build. It has a total of 6 cores, 12 threads, base frequency of 3.7 GHz, and supports up to 64 GB of memory, perfect for my motherboard specifications. To install the CPU, locate the CPU socket on the motherboard. Unlock the retention arm, and gently swing the arm back to expose the socket. Then, locate the golden triangle on the CPU and line it up with the imprinted white triangle on the CPU socket. Give it a little wiggle and make sure the CPU sits in place. Swing the retention arm back down and lock it back in place. The socket cover will come off. I kept mine just in case. For my main storage drive, I bought a Samsung 960 EVO M.2 solid state drive. To install, locate the M.2 heatsink and remove these two screws. Remove the heatsink and install the M.2 SSD into the slot. Press down on the SSD, replace the heatsink, and reinstall the two screws. For the RAM, I am using Corsair's Vengeance 16GB RGB DDR4 4000MHz, perfect for gaming and video editing. When installing the RAM, locate the two grey colored RAM slots. Unlock the tabs, and press each one into the slot until all tabs lock back into place. The case for this build is Corsair's Crystal Series 570X RGB ATX Mid Tower. Let's begin the build. First, I remove the four screws on top of the case and remove the tempered glass. Then, repeat the process on the right side of the case. I'm removing the fans in front of the case so I can install a large radiator to the front. To do this, repeat the process in removing the front glass panel then remove the magnetic fan filter screen. Then, begin removing the two screws that hold the front fans in place. Before uninstalling the fans, locate the cable shield on the left side of the case and remove it to expose the fan wires that need to be disconnected. The fans are connected to the Corsair RGB controller in slot 1, 2, and 3. Remove by pressing down on the middle tab to unlock the wire from each port. Swing the fans back and pull the wires through. And begin removing the 12 screws from the frame. The intercooler I am using is the new Corsair H150i Pro. This has a 360mm aluminum radiator, so it will be perfect fit to mount on the front of the case. The heatsink is made of copper and has thermal paste pre-applied from the factory. The pump head has RGB LEDs and comes with the needed hardware and Corsair ML series fans. First adjust the backplate, install on the back of the motherboard, and align the posts with the holes that surround the backside of the CPU. Next, install the four mounting screws into the four holes like so. Now that it is complete, carefully install the motherboard into the computer case. And now we can screw in all nine mounting screws in the following locations. Now install the two Corsair LL140 RGB fans to the top of the case. 
Screw in all eight mounting screws and adjust as needed. Next, I'm using Corsair's LL120 RGB fan on the rear of the case to pull the hot air out. First, position the fan in place. And install the four mounting screws like so. We are now halfway done with the build and it's looking beautiful already. I decided to flip over the top fans so that I can see the beautiful RGB lights from within the case. Now it is time to remove the front fans to be replaced with three Corsair LL120 RGB fans. Remove all 12 long screws and set to the side for now. We will be using all 12 screws again for the new fans. Set the plate to the side and remove the three fans. I purchased the Corsair LL120 RGB 3-pack. This came with 3 LL120 RGB fans, total of 12 mounting screws, Corsair's RGB controller module, SATA power, and the necessary cables to connect to the motherboard. Place each fan onto the radiator. And replace the plate. Then screw in all 12 of the long screws to secure the fans in place. Now let's install the pump head. Remove the protective plastic and be careful not to ruin the pre-applied thermal paste. Now install the pump head onto the posts and make sure it is seated evenly on top of the CPU. Install the four mounting screws to each corner. Use a screwdriver to secure the screws in place. I like to do this in an X pattern to even out the pump head. Do not over tighten or you can damage the CPU or motherboard in the process. Simply mount the radiator in place and reinstall the two mounting screws. I chose to use the Commander Pro to have full control of all fans, and all RGB lighting. Installing the Commander Pro was easy, but of course, cable management looked like a jungle. I promise, it looks a lot better in the end. For the power supply, I am using Corsair's HX1000i. It is a high performance ATX power supply and packs plenty of watts that I need to run this awesome machine. Upon taking it out of the box and its nice bag, you can see the HX1000i has plenty of connections to use. In the box you get the power supply, a small bag that contains a whole heap of cables, and zip ties at your disposal. To install, slide the power supply into the side of the case, then install the four screws to mount the power supply in place. Now that it is all done, here is the fun part. For the graphics card, I bought not one, but two NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1080s. The GeForce GTX 1080 Founders Edition features NVIDIA Onsel, 1607 MHz clock speed, it has 8GB DDR5X memory on board, 2560 CUDA processing cores, 320 gigabit per second memory bandwidth, it is SLI and G-Sync ready. Inside the box you will find a welcome pamphlet, and inside of it, NVIDIA gives you a special edition premium badge. On the end of the graphics card it has one DVI connector, total of three DisplayPort connectors, and one HDMI connector. Now that the graphics cards are ready to go, it is now time for the install. Start by removing the slot covers that corresponds to the PCI Express slots that will be used. Install the top graphics card into the slot until it locks in place. Then, reinstall the screws. Repeating the same process, insert the graphics card into the second PCI Express slot. Lock it in place 
and reinstall the screws to mount the card in place. To complete the graphics card installation, I am going to use the SLI bridge that came with my Asus motherboard. Simply place the SLI bridge onto both graphics cards, give it a little push, and now it is secured and ready to go. Now that the internals are all done, let's complete the build. Reassemble the top by reinstalling the dust filter, the tempered glass, and the four screws. For both sides of the case, reinstall the tempered glass and screw in the four screws. No need to over tighten or you can damage the glass. Final step now is to remove the protective film. And there you have it, my latest and greatest creation. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you all next time.